Podcast. We are live. Coast to coast, border to border, internationally live, because I'm an international radio host. I need to get me some merch. By the way, go to JiggyJaguar.com for that merch. And uh, we are going to go to our good friend, Mr. John O'Connor, who is going to join us. <laughs> oh, boy. We have got just, it just seems like this never ends. And uh, we are in we are into a completely different month, and we are still. Oh, my connection is too weak. Your connection is too weak, according to this. Uh, okay, we're gonna see we if Skype. We're gonna see if Skype will let me do this. Uh, <laughs> we have got. John O'Connor. John, can you hear us, my friend? I don't know if he can hear us. You can hear me, can't you, Jiggy? I've got you. You're excellent. Oh, good. I can hear you just fine. You you, you look fantastic, as always. And uh, I can't believe we're talking about something that happened last month. Um, (laughs) Yeah. What 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 do you make of all this election stuff, my friend? That's that's going on with Giuliani well, and everybody. Yeah, yeah. First of all, when Barr comes out and says that there's not enough evidence yet, I looked at it, and it's pretty clear he hadn't looked at everything. He had he had. And an unfortunate part of this is this whole Dominion voting thing. Uh, it's fine to raise it, but there's no real evidence yet. Yet. And you don't want it to deflect uh, focus from what Rudy Giuliani calls the old-fashioned case. The old-fashioned case is, is, you know, it's got several parts to it. So let me go through the way I'd look at it. Okay. One, all the left-leaning sites said that we would have rejection rates should soar in this election. They'd normally been, uh, it depends on the state and how they look at the ballots, but they should be soaring with uh, younger voters, with a tremendous increase in voting of people who've never done it before by mail, and rejection rates were supposed to soar. There was a little headline in the New York Times the other day, uh, first page, gee, rejection rates plummeted unexpectedly. Oh my God. <laughs> now, now the article says maybe everybody just got real careful the way they looked at things and the way they looked at signatures. Well, there's also much evidence that would explain the historically low rejection rates in a in a an election when they should have been historically high, and you've got all kinds of them. And uh, I don't need to repeat them all, but people being told not to check for signatures or just to put things through, and sometimes they're formal, sometimes they're informal. Uh, changes not approved by the legislature. Some of them just sneaky things. Postal service people told this and that. Then you've got statistical anomalies suggesting fraud. Rand Paul put out a great deal when all of a sudden, between 1.30 in the morning and 6.30 in the morning, when everybody's supposedly gone, there are these amazingly severe spikes. I mean, it looks like El Capitan at at, at, at Yosemite, you know? Straight up. That's awesome. And then boom, straight up, El Capitan. And uh, that was what was done in the dark at night, with hopefully without observers around. And then you've got anecdotes suggesting how that happened, you know, thousands of votes coming in and all this and that, the truck driver in New York. Um, and so uh, you put all these things together with the anecdotal evidence of fraud, and you come up with the following conclusion. There is substantial evidence of widespread irregularities in each of these swing states uh, that may have, underlined may or might, have affected the outcome. Now, the final question, we're all doing just wonderfully so far, Jiggy. Everything's good, just going great for us. Now, here's the question. Here's the question. Uh, is what was shown uh, shown of sufficient numerosity or effect even though okay. it's a substantial effect, is that substantial effect enough to overturn an election where there was X, 
votes margin. And my belief is that I will bet not my house, but a good part of my house <laughs> on the back, that there will not be people in black robes who, by the way, do not have an army or a police force. Uh, those people in black robes will decide that there is not enough here in the exercise of their discretion to overturn a vote. And uh, we will have uh, Vice President Biden sworn in as our next president. And it will be very disconcerting to all the people who think that elections should be no sort of this old fashioned stuff, fair, play by the rules, uh, you know, uh, supervised by the electoral process. Uh, Obviously, that didn't happen here. Um, But I think, you know, Biden's our next president. And I think it's too bad. I, I keep saying this now, unless somebody comes out with a bombshell. I mean, you're you're hoping for that desperation pass. <laughs> yes, time. yes. Doug Flutie, where are you? you know? <laughs> I do, I do like the Doug Flutie reference. That's awesome. John O'Connor with us today. He joins us live as he has been since election night. Each and every week, we talk with John, and uh, I'll tell you, we're we're probably going to end up doing this after the election is officially over. Because I just like chatting with John. He's he's got he's got a lot of good information, and our listeners uh, love his common sense approach to things. So, what do you make of Rudy Giuliani and all the things that he's doing, and all the folks that are working with him, and and all this? Well, you know, I think Rudy's case is pretty good. Uh, and yeah. I was very keep impressed talking, with keep talking, John. Keep talking. With his opening statement that he made in his press conference, uh, so described by Jen Ellis, I think that uh, it, it was actually pretty good for a lawyer listening to it. I think you know Rudy's Rudy's was pretty much on his game. Uh, the problem is the press the press really comes after him, and they try to laugh him off. Uh, there is probably a failure of simple messaging. Uh, the press is against you anyway, but the simple messaging should be, you know, focus on a couple things that, listen, there's enough irregularities here that, to have a substantial effect, boom. Um, but uh, so so you have a double whammy there, but the press is really, uh, the media is really bad here. So, so John, as as we wrap up here, and uh, and and we go we go to our next segment here in just a few moments. Before we do that, um, where can people buy your books and get in touch with you online and and, and everything, my friend? Well, like I say, uh, Jiggy, the whole problem is the press. It's the press now. The the, the court is going to be afraid of the media. Yeah, and that's why I wrote. That's why I spent a good chunk of my life writing the book Postgate: How the Washington Post uh, Betrayed Deep Throat, Covered Up Watergate. That's the key: Covered Up Watergate, and began today's partisan advocacy journalism. You can go on postgatebook.com or Amazon. Postgatebook.com's got all my articles. This is where it all started. This is where these guys became political players. Yep. This is how they did it. And if you don't think there's fraud in the press, uh read my book and no matter what and i've been reading every book that comes out on fake news by the by the leftist people and uh, oh they love to say that trump's lying all the time and all that stuff this book sort of settles the question yes well john i i I will talk to you next week and hopefully we have uh that doug flutie pass Maybe it comes out of Europe, the CIA, or wherever, but we don't know. Huh? Well, John, have yourself a good weekend. I'll talk to you next Thursday. Thank you, my friend. You too, buddy. Take Appreciate care. it. See there he goes. John Oak. I turned my microphone before I hit the music. Look at that. <laughs>